Yes, sisters and brothers, I'm humbled to stand with you today in Coventry, a city with a proud union history. And I'm also very privileged to be sharing a platform with our striking workers, our reps, but also particularly our suspended and victimised shop steward, Pete Randall. And we will be going nowhere, Pete, until you are back to work, and I promise you that. I now speak directly, absolutely directly, to the Unite Labour councillors in Coventry. Because today, I am going to put you on notice. I'm going to put you on notice that you are going to receive today, through the post and via email, your suspension from Unite. You no longer, you no longer will be able to hold office in my union or be part of our structures while we investigate your behaviour. And I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat that in case they're not listening. You will no longer be able to hold office in Unite or in any part of our structures until we investigate your behaviour. And rest assured, you will not be getting your hands on any of Unite's money for your elections in May. Shame on you! 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 You have absolutely no Labour principles that I recognise. None of what you are doing is anything I understand to be Labour. You've been authorising payments to replace striking workers. They are paying the people that are replacing you more money than you are asking them to pay you in this dispute. How is that right? It's absolutely disgusting. Suspending the union rep deliberately to escalate the action and not paying uh, the rate for the job. This is not about left or right. They keep talking about left or right this, left or right that. This is basic trade union principle. No one believes your lies. We are not going to tolerate your attacks. And the full weight of Unite is behind these workers. Sisters and brothers, let's be really clear what this dispute is about. This dispute is about pay, pure and simple. This is just another bad employer doing exactly what they think they're able to get away with, saying that because of COVID, they cannot give pay rise to workers. It's absolute rubbish, they can afford to do it, and I expect them to do it. Workers are hurting, families are hurting, communities are hurting. And instead of recognising what you did, every day in the pandemic that you went out and you did the job when you didn't know what was going on out there, other people could work from home, you couldn't work from home, that this council has treated you with no respect whatsoever and not even will come to the negotiating table. They peddled lies about hardworking men and women. Deliberately saying, saying that you earn £52,000 a year. Every time I'm interviewed about this, this is raised. Where is this bloke that earns £52,000 a year? No one can find him. Um, because they don't. Nobody earns £52,000 a year unless they are working every hour of every day. They are deliberately trying to sow anger. Anger between you and your community. Well, we're going to make damn sure that this community knows who the real liars are. And what about Councillor Duggins? What about him? Who are you? Where is he? Where's Wally? We can't find him. Um, he's, not, he's not been in any of the negotiations. He's not doing the job he is paid for. I'd like to look at his job description. Why does he think that he should not be in this, these negotiations? I negotiate with employers up and down the country. I've negotiated with council leaders up and down the country. Tory council leaders up and down the country. What does it say about this particular leader who will not come to the negotiating table? Why will he not do that? Because it tells lies. Because he's a liar. Um, stop hiding behind your curtain. This is your responsibility, Councillor Duggins. Get out of the room and get back to the negotiating table. I just want to talk a little bit about the incompetence of this council. And it is shocking when you think of what they've been saying. They have spent £2.9 million, just think about that for a second, £2.9 million on this dispute. 
It would only have cost £300,000 to solve the dispute. And that amount of money, £300,000, actually more, they have given as a golden handshake to the outgoing deputy CEO. So they've got money to give people who are retiring, taxpayers' money, but they don't have money to settle this dispute. And we are going to make sure that the residents of Coventry know this. The council is paying more, as I said, to strike breakers for breaking the strike. And this clearly shows that you are right, that we should be getting the rate for the job. We're going to be next week escalating this action. We're going to be up and down in all the roads of Coventry. We're going to be speaking to residents and we are going to open the books of this council. We know, we know, we know that they've been spending money. We know where they've been spending money and I don't believe their constituents will like where they've been spending money. So as we speak, we've got forensic accountants looking at the accounts of this council and we will make those accounts public and then the residents will know where the money has gone. Bring them down! Pay the rate! 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 I just want to say a couple of words just to workers everywhere and of course on the backs of what you're doing because you are a shining light to workers up and down the countries because we've seen this before at the end of the 2008 crash when we're all in it together again at the end of the 2008 financial crash the pain was felt by workers communities paid the price year after year after year while people couldn't eat their homes others drank champagne we are seeing now after this pandemic that companies who made huge amounts from the pandemic millions and millions and millions of pounds are asked to pay absolutely nothing yet workers are asking to pay the price tax the corporations and get the money from those who profiteered from the pandemic Politicians of all colours, and this is a message to Labour, politicians of all colours have failed workers. In this council, they've failed you, but they are failing workers up and down the country. Labour, where the hell are you? Where is your voice? People are hurting. How far under do people have to go before you are going to speak? Governments have failed. They are too far removed from everyday lives of working people. It's now time to change, to demand, to mobilise and not just to lobby. Friends, I will not accept Labour treating workers by riding on the coattails of our movement. The Labour Party and Labour have one hand in our pocket and the other right up our back. And I cannot understand how Labour is not doing something about this dispute, but why they're embarrassed to have trade unions who are workers being part of them. And so I repeat, one hand up in our pocket and the other up our back will not be tolerated. This struggle, this struggle that you are facing here should be a flame of resistance for others. Let's remember where trade unions were born. They were forged by the working class, nobody else. The working class created trade unions in a cauldron of fire in the midst of the deportations and the gallows, not in a meeting hall, but in our workplaces and our communities. We do not have to accept what politicians are telling us. We do not have to accept what they are doing to us. We need now to rise up. So here with you in this great city of Coventry, whether it's 70 members or workers, or 70,000 workers, or 700,000 workers, my response will always be the same. Trade unions exist to fight for working people, to make sure that they get their piece of the pie. So let me repeat my message to Councillor Duggins and to Labour. Unite is here to fight for these workers. Make no mistake, this is the start, it is not the end. My members will not be staffed back to work because I will not let that happen. This campaign will not fade away because we will not stop our support. And the incompetence of this council, the incompetence of this Labour council, I will expose. Coventry, we stand with you. I stand with you. Thank you and solidarity.